Welcome back, everybody, to the Pokemon TPV version playthrough. This is part 13. And, uh, yeah, we're here in part Spooky 13 in Spooky Lavender Town. You know, go figure. Also, the fact that it's part 13 makes me realize that I'm going to be putting that in my Friday the 13th playthrough. Or, our playlist! Oh, my God. Friday the 13th play playthrough, if only. You know, I did my Nightmare on Elm Street. So, you know, it's freaking... Where's Friday the 13th on the NES? Anyway, so uh, Rocky's learning new moves. Adrian! And uh, we're getting rid of uh, stinky old self-destruct for even better uh, explosion. Mouser. Could be learning thunder. I think I said no to this. Yeah, because, yeah, I, I looked up thunder. It was like a small time skip there. I looked up thunder, and yeah, its accuracy is really, really bad. I, I thought maybe it wasn't as bad in Generation 1, but I'm pretty sure it was just as bad in every generation. Now I have to look it up again. I'm very upset. Also, I had a couple of tabs here open. It was stuff that I was going to mention during this video, but uh, not right at the moment. We're going to go through this building here as we go south from Lavender Town. We're going to talk to this person who has such a really sad story. Her Pokemon's ashes are stored in the tower, and then she says, you can have this TM. I don't need it anymore. And it's like those dot, dot, dots. Just like, ah... Also, and then she says, you use it during battles you can't afford to lose. God, that, that, now that just makes me think that, like, her Pokemon died during a battle, which is awful. God, it's just like, I hate, I hated seeing that. It's like, I don't need it anymore. She's like, oh, God, stop. My heart. Anyway, so now we're going to be uh, battling some fishermen here. <coughs> I got a bite here. You know, fishermen, I swear, they have just, like, the creepiest intro quotes. Oh, speaking of creepy. Oh, by the way, so, it's taken me... How long have I been playing Pokemon? I want to say 18 years? Yeah, I think I started in 98. It took me this long to realize that Jinx's sprite in Generation 1 is winking! I never realized that. I thought that her left eye, you know, her, on her side, her left eye, was just, I thought it was just, like, a weird, like, I don't know, I thought they, like, screwed up the pixels for her, like, pupils or something, and, like, made it stretch out randomly. No, she's winking. I don't know why I never realized that. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, no super speed here, because I'm pretty sure that these are Pokemon that I haven't ever faced before. I, again, I'm not 100% sure, you know, I, just, I really it, did not keep track of this when I probably should have. And, uh, yeah, we're just gonna think about this. <laughs> we'll think about it. Yeah, we're gonna switch out real quick to Shelly. Huh? Okay. Go with Shelly. I guess I figured, oh yeah, no, I figured I didn't want to go with Acid Reflex just in case that Dugong did like an Aurora Beam or an Ice Beam or something. And then, then Acid Reflex would have been in big trouble. Also, Acid Reflex's Grass type attack shouldn't be super effective against this Dugong because it is part Ice. But again, the super effective um, mechanic in this game is really messed up and I don't really understand it completely. <clears throat> oh, first Gyarados of the playthrough. Hey, he's got a U-Mad. Awesome. Again, I assume that this is the first U-Mad of the playthrough. So, uh, you know, I didn't super speed this either. Of course, we have to go with Mouser. He should be fast enough. Ooh, it took a little bit of a risk there. Ooh, nice. It paid off. At 25% chance for it to be paralyzed. It did, in fact, happen. And, oh, didn't one-shot him. Uh, oh, good. He did Leer. This is looking good, and we got him. Alright, cool. Just as long as that... I think Dun Thunderbolt actually does have a 100% accuracy, so I don't think I had to worry about it missing there. Alright. <laughs> Just a small fry. I love how it's like... That's how it, like, alliterates. Is that the word I'm looking for? Alliterates? The word... Uh, like, the, the sound, you know... Titch, you know, T-C-H. Is it... No, it's not alliterate. Alliteration is... When every word in the sentence is the starts with the same letter, uh, the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of the edition. Yeah, okay, yeah, it is. I, what am I like thinking of? Is it onomatopoeia? That thing. Yeah, I think that's. I don't know, I'm not even gonna bother looking it up. Anyway, so we're gonna super speed this while I go ahead and read uh, 
you know, some comments and stuff from you guys, because uh, I always love those and appreciate those. Um, Giratina493 said, I love Omastar's sprite in this generation. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Implying that Amistar is looking... He's, he's looking very Michigan J. Frog over there. The fishing fool versus the Pokemon kid. I love that. It's like the showdown. All right. This guy's... I'm telling you, man. Fishermen are like the most messed up class in the game. Oh, a Sea King. Once again, pretty sure that's the first one in this playthrough. So I didn't super speed this. And this is this guy's only Pokemon. So that's pretty good. Uh, let's see, uh, Schmutz, aka Wooper, uh, you're mentioning the Poke an Pokemon anniversary, of course, you know, this 20 year anniversary this year. Of course, that is still going on, and I am, you know, still getting mythical Pokemon in my uh, mystery gift at the beginning of every month. Of course, uh, this month, we got Manaphy. Manaphy. Oh, and that's right! Did I mention about how I was watching the Pokemon movies? I don't think, I think I started that after I did the commentary for the previous part. I can't remember. But yeah, no, I like, I absolutely binge watched the Pokemon movies. Not, not one after the other, but like, you know, one a day, basically. Um, and yeah, because I didn't know anything that happens with the uh, Pokemon movies, like past the fourth one or the fifth one. So, you know, I was like genuinely interested, you know, just to see like how they were. Also, first Tartar of the playthrough. Yeah, legit Tartar, not some smelly Politoed. It's you know, even though that didn't exist in this generation. Also, I'm pretty sure I just crushed Smutch's heart by calling it Smelly Politoed because she loves Politoed and Generation Two in general. But yeah, Generation Two is, is awesome. I love Generation Two; it's my favorite. But uh, yeah, you know, I was just I was just messing around. Anyway, so we got some super speedy action going on here. But yeah, no, some of the movies were actually way better than I imagined they, they were going to be. And some of them were way worse than I was imagining they were going to be. Yeah, some of them were really, really formulaic after a while. And it was just like, eh, how much longer does this movie have? <laughs> Alrighty. It's not easy being cheesy. Alright. Also, yeah, random time skip here because I went back to the Pokemon Center to go heal. And I didn't quite realize that there are no trainers after this point. It's just this relax. Hey, how's it going? Sleepy fat buddy. Sport fishing area. What? I guess... It, this is this is a route, isn't it? This is... this. It should be a route. I can't remember what route it is. Might as well just look it up now. Let's look up Lavender Town. Uh, BD, 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 BD. To the south is Route 12. Okay, so that's where we're at. Route 12. And uh, we're going to be moving on from Route 12. Now, unfortunately, we can't do anything else in Lavender Town because we don't have the Sylph Scope. And until we have that, we can't quite finish up with the one thing that you do in Lavender Town. And it's not a very eventful town, luckily. It's really spooky. and It's got the crazy, you know, killing children's ears music. So, you know, it's just that's just how it goes. Anyway, all right, so we're going uh, west now. Yeah, west to Route 8. So this is Route 8, and this is a rambling, gambling dude. Gee, I wonder if he's a gambler. Hmm. Dunno! Anyway, so he's going to send out a Primeape, which uh, I'm like almost 100% sure we've seen like multiple times in this playthrough. So I'm going to get a super speed going here. As we look at more comments, uh, Aaronic97 says... Science! You don't have a My Favorite Pokemon Venusaur. He meant to say since there. I guess I'll do a slogan for Acid Reflux. Acid Reflux will never lose and the rest of the team can't win without his moves. <laughs> I like that one. That was uh, that was very simple yet effective. And that was, uh, that was pretty funny. Alright. So that's it for that guy's Primeape and Ninetales. <laughs> Making quick work of those. Now I decided to... Uh, skip through the rest of these trainers as best as I possibly could. I'm going to be using Acid Reflux to get some cut there. Checking if that had an item in there. And uh, that's because, well, I realize that Celadon City is coming up next. And Celadon City's Pokemart happens to have some very useful and interesting and very cool colored stones. Uh, Alright, I should, well, I should say elemental stones. I'm, you know, colored in this, you know, they're yellow and green and red and blue, you know. But yeah, you know, I was kind of hoping to get those stones before I uh, did any more battles because, uh, you know, it might make uh, one or two of my Pokemon even better. 
Also, that's our first interaction with the guard, the gate guards, uh, outside of each entrance to Saffron City. Um, each one of them says the same exact thing. They're thirsty, and uh, we have to bring them something to drink. But unfortunately, we don't have that yet either, so we can't go to Saffron City. Which then we would get the Sylph scope from there, which then we can go to Lavender Town to finish up. So you know the the quests are basically piling up here that we can't quite do yet. Uh, what else we got here now? Alke 90, 1993 said another poem thing that was uh, particularly long, and I really want to read his poems, but you know I would like it if they were you know, maybe a, a smidgen shorter, you know, like maybe four lines max. Uh, Captain1455 says, Why is Pokemon Red on the 3DS not in color? They can get yellow, but I... Or, you can get yellow, but I don't want Pikachu. And everything is black and white. And yeah, that was... That was written kind of confusingly. Anyway, but yeah, no, he brings up a good point. I don't know why Red and Blue on the 3DS eShop, or the, the virtual console, I should say, are in black and white, but yellow is not. Uh, I mean, they easily... I mean, look, look at... Pokemon Red right here in front of you on your screen. It's very clearly in color. And also Celadon City has a very interesting greenish color. I, I guess that would be the color Celadon. I'm not familiar with that color. But yeah, uh, so, you know, the very first thing that we're doing here, aside from healing up, is we're gonna check out the Pokemon. Now, I can't remember which, which um, shop seller guy actually sells these stones, because there are a lot of shop seller guys in this actual Pokemart. It is a humongous multi-level shopping mall. Um, but yeah, Celadon. Wears glazed in jade green Celadon color. Oh, okay. Okay, so this guy gave us a free TM. TM18. Uh, that's counter. I don't think I'm going to be using that. Also, I thought this was kind of cool. You know, it's just got like a game station going in here. And people are just like playing on their Game Boys. You just have like SNESs up there on the on the display tables, you know, this is, we're back to the mid-90s now. Alright, so we're gonna be buying a Thunderstone and a Leaf Stone. I can't imagine why. <laughs> also, yeah, there's a couple TMs there that weren't normally supposed to be there in Pokemon Red. I believe they were edited in for this ROM hack. Uh, but yeah, no, they, they are TMs that you can buy normally in this place, but for some reason you buy it from this guy instead. What Mouser is evolving? I would not have seen that coming. Are you surprised as I am? No, probably not. Hey, he's a Raichu now. All right. <sighs> so we got Raichu Mouser now with his fancy Mouser sunglasses. See, now he really looks like Mouser. Cause you know, Mouser is all big and fat. And what is this? Acid Reflux is evolving too. My mind is just blown. I can't- two evolutions in one video? How could this happen? That's awesome. Acid Reflux is now a victory bell. That didn't fit very well. I was say that rhyme though. Alright, so we've got Fancy Mouser Raichu and Fancy Acid Reflux Victory Bell. We're gonna be heading up really quickly to the roof of the uh, Celadon Pokemon Mart thing. And uh, well, before that, we're gonna just uh, check out these guys, see what they have for sale. Nope. Nothing interesting there, so we're just gonna head up onto the roof, where there's uh, a little girl, ha, huh, uh, that gives you stuff. I believe that it's, it's this guy's sister. Is like, he's talking about how she's a trainer and it drives him nuts. Also, she's thirsty too. Wow, everybody's just thirsty. They just they're just too lazy to just get you know a drink. Ah, that sound. God, when I heard that sound, I thought my game was freezing. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie here. So yeah, it's very simple. You just buy each of the individual drinks from the vending machine up here, give it to the little girl, and she will give you a TM for each one, but you only get one of each. You can't just like keep buying the drinks and then she'll give you like infinite of, you know, TM13 Ice Beam, which is of course very good. Oh God, that, ugh. Oh, that sound just scares me. It, it, <laughs> it actually sounds like something's blue screening. Oh God, all right. So we're gonna give her this soda poop, and this is the one that we wanted, TM48. TM48 contains Rock Slide, and we're gonna give Rock Slide to Rocky, because Rock Slide is a million times better than Rock Throw. Not literally. 
and TM49 contains Tri Attack. Now, unfortunately, the only person in my team that can learn Tri Attack is, of course, Velocitus. But Velocitus learns Tri Attack normally via level up, so that's kind of pointless. So, yeah, we're just going to immediately use that Rock Slide TM. And we're going to give it to Rocky. And like I said, Rock Slide is a million, bazillion, bojillion times better than Rock Throw. And now Rocky has the much better Rock Slide. Thank you, little girl. You are very helpful. All right. Now well, let's get back to a couple of comments here. Um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, Flash Silver eighty eight asks, uh, "And do you know if the Mew and Missing No glitches work in this ROM hack? They absolutely should. I can't imagine why they wouldn't, because it's like I said, it's the exact same game as Pokemon Red, but you know, it's just they edited, you know, the spawns and." And some other stuff. I think we're actually going to see one of the uh, custom added things to this ROM hack very shortly in this video. As we just kind of waltz around here and sell it on City. I was trying to look for the place that you get the coin case. Uh, unfortunately, I missed it. It's uh, yeah, well, It was one of those buildings that I just passed. I can't remember. It wasn't this one. But yeah, this is, this is like a Pokemon. Yeah, this is a hotel or something. Yeah. That's pretty strange. I like it. I don't think there's ever been a use for a hotel until Generation 6, when, you know, you could do an X and Y, the whole hotel riches me, and, or riches me, maybe? Like, you know, I am rich, riches me, whatever. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, you use that, and then that um, ups your Pokemon's affection for Pokemon and me. Uh, yeah, this is it right here. This is the Battle Tent, which of course never existed in Red and Blue. This is where trainers from all over come into 10 battles at a time. If you win, I'm pretty sure it's like something like this started in Gen 3, wasn't it? And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and then there's this extremely useful shop, which sells endgame stuff at this point in the, in, in, uh, in the game. Which, of course, is very useful because my Pokemon are all like, you know, in level 40s, you know, they're pushing 50. And I, like, have, like, super potions and stuff. Like, I could really use full heals and like hyper potions and max revives and stuff like that so that is extremely useful that that is there i don't know what what was there originally but uh definitely wasn't that <laughs> so yeah that was that was a very cool and interesting ad ad addition uh i like, didn't even know that i was there but yeah now i do all right so we're gonna cut this tree <coughs> which of course was like not necessary because i almost went up here when i was down there earlier, and yeah, there's just a pee, pee up here. Uh, but yeah, there was a cut, like I said, there was a couple of tabs open that I had that I uh, was gonna mention some stuff. Also, oh yeah, there was a time skip there because again, I was wandering around and I could not find this place. Yes, we gotta talk to this guy to get the coin case. Uh, there's a couple tabs I have open. Uh, I was looking at the uh, legendaries for Pokemon Sun and Moon, and because I was thinking of fire types. And I was just like, oh yeah, that new legendary from, you know, Pokemon Sun, uh, Solgaleo, Solgaleo, should be a fire type. No, it's not. It's a psychic steel type, like Jirachi. I don't understand why it's not a fire type. It should, it should have been a fire steel type. And then Lunala is a psychic ghost type. Why can't it be a psychic dark type? You know, I mean, you would think that, you know, oh, it's the moon, you know, the moon comes out at night, the night is dark, you know, I don't, I really wish that they would have done that, like, I, I would love for there to be more Pokemon that are psychic and dark, because that combination is just so cool, and it's ruined by the super creepy, um, what's his name, um, friggin' uh, Malamar, it's totally ruined by creepy Malamar. And then Hoopa, like, un- or Bound Hoopa. Bound Hoopa is the only other Pokemon that has Psychic and Dark. And then it gets overshadowed by Unbound Hoopa, which is then Psychic and- Oh! Oh wait, no, that's Psychic and Dark, right. Unbound Hoopa is, and then, right, Bound Hoopa is Psychic Ghost. Lol, whoops. Okay, so I guess- I guess that one's alright. You know, we've, we've got a- a mythical Pokemon in Hoopa. That's, uh, you know, the Unbound Hoopa. Did I mention I'm gambling? Yeah, I ran around and picked up some coins and I'm gambling. Uh, so the reason that I was doing that was just to basically show it for the playthrough. I was kind of going to do it, but I didn't realize, I didn't think of how many coins you actually get. And it's absolutely nothing. So I just decided to cheat and I used a Game Shark code to just give me infinite coins. 
Because all I really want is TM15, and that's it. I want literally nothing else. Which is, of course, the Hyper Meme. Hyper Beam. The Hyper Meme. Uh, I wasn't actually sure if I bought it just then, because it didn't give me, like, a message. But yeah, there it is. Hyper Meme is, in fact, in my items. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be teaching that to some flying type that doesn't exist in my party just yet, but will shortly once it hits level 50. Or was it 55? Oh, I think it's 55. Yeah, that's, that's even worse. Anyway, so we're going to be doing some inventory swapping out. As I'm going to be signing out from this video, that's it for this one. Join me in part 14 of the Pokemon TPP version playthrough, where we will be doing some more stuff in Celadon City. See you all next time.